So I've always wanted to be in a movie and I tried for 20 years and then the industry got so woke so I started making videos and you guys liked them and shared them and then a producer saw them and they put me in a movie and the trailer is out. Hello everybody, welcome to the Tyler Fisher Show. So good to see you. We're back baby. We're back. I'm going to keep saying that until I can do this every week. But um, but big news, good news, so much news. Big league, right? We call it big, le- big league. Big league news. And we're building a wall around the entertainment industry. So if you're just joining us, new to the show, welcome. Virgi- we're going to take your virginity here. We'll, be, we'll go easy. Um did this movie with Gina Carano. I know I've been talking a lot about it, and I'm so excited because this came out of nowhere. They released a trailer teaser video. Not a trailer, a teaser of a trailer. I mean, that, what a whore, what a fucking tease that is. That's like, it's like not even showing your nip. It's like just showing a picture of your nip. Nip tease. Without further ado, here is the world premiere te- teaser trailer for Terror on the Prairie. Cheers. Looks good, right? It looks like a movie. I mean, not only is this the first feature film I've ever done, but it actually looks like a movie. That's because, well, little secret, it is a movie. I'd say it's a $15 million movie made with $2 million because everybody was so amped up and willing to, you know, cut some corners maybe pay-wise and all that stuff. We all just said, let's do it. Uh, Did it non-union off the grid in Montana. And let's see if we can show you here. I'm in it a couple times there, but it's hard to see me. So the first time was, I think, when I'm riding up on the horse. And you're going to see here, that was the first time I rode the horse, and we we actually weren't supposed to trot because we all, I didn't really know how to ride a horse. They're like, ah, you're not going to trot. And then we kept getting so wrapped up in the scene and everything. We all just kept breaking those rules. Not safe, not safe. I am, uh, look at that. Look at that. See all that snow in the horizon? We got a blizzard. We got like 15 inches the first day of shooting. And thank God, because look at what it set up there. This wasn't even how much snow we got. So they rewrote the script to fit in that snow. And look how gorgeous that is. I mean, it's just going to be a beautiful film cinematically and artistically and... All the good stuff. So, oh, there it is. All right, here we go. We're riding up on the horses. And I'm all the way on the left. And I'm going to freeze it. Because you're going to (laughs) see... Look at me right there. (laughs) Look how natural... (laughs) 
these guys are like they've <laughs> they've ridden horses before. Look at my arm. I am holding on for dear life because I was like, oh, we weren't supposed to trot, you fucking assholes. And then you can see. <laughs> oh, that's funny. That's funny. And then uh, here I am again holding the knife to Gina's. Yeah, I got Gina captive there. I'm on the left. And then Cowboy Cerrone dives down and tackles him. I mean, come on. It looks pretty good, right? doesn't look cheesy or anything. Cowboy Cerrone, the UFC fighter. I kicked his ass during the movie. Kicked his ass. And then right there. There I am there. I can't tell you what happens here. Can't tell you what happens. Look at me. I got a shotgun. Foof. It's like 10 degrees outside. They just grab me from my trailer. They go, all right, you're heading to set. They hand me a gun, tie me up. All these explosives in your body and such. So anyhow, uh, yeah, it's a, it's going to be great. It's coming out in June. I don't think I could say exactly when. And I don't know if anyone, let me know in the comments if anybody watched Shut In which was the Daily Wire's first ever movie that they produced themselves. I think they acquired one right before that. And then Shut In, they actually, is the first movie that they produced and funded and, you know, probably helped cast it and all that stuff. And I didn't watch it. I, w I will, but I'm a bit of a scaredy cat, and it's a, it's like a real thriller, horror type of suspense movie and uh, I I was it was a little too late at night to watch that but it looks fantastic and it's and it's got you know it got tons of views and everything and look at that Terror on the Prairie already has 1.2 million views just on the trailer that's just on the Daily Wire I put it on my YouTube page as well if you want to I'll put the link to that trailer teaser <laughs> teaser trailer I'll put that in my uh my description there but that's a good sign that's a lot of views on a trailer for a movie on a site that doesn't do movies you know let's we'll, we'll, we'll com all right we'll compare that to uh i don't know if you've seen uh no i don't even want to give them a, a click there's this racist ass movie called uh uh everything's gonna be all white and you guessed it. It is a woke ass movie saying the most horrific things about all white people. How wonderful. So they got 2.4 million views on their trailer. However, that trailer's been out for a while and it's on Showtime, major streaming platform, major TV, you know, paid TV channel. You know, it's been around for a long time. It got 4,000 views and they gave it out for free. <laughs> And they gave the movie out for free. 2.4 million people watched the trailer. The comments were so bad. There were everyone, white, black, yellow, fucking beige, were like, this is racist, this is racist, this is racist. I'm black, this is racist. I'm Chinese, this is racist. I'm a Jew, this is racist. And uh, they removed the comments. And then three or 4,000 out of 2.4 million watched the movie. People are fed up with this shit. And places like Daily Wire are going to clean up they are gonna clean up because they're people are uh running to this stuff and actors uh people like me uh, who aren't towing the democratic line or whatever you fucking say dude i don't know what you say you fucking oh, lives matter dude whatever dude you know they're giving us a chance and they're not doing what mtv did has i don't know if i told you this the last time but mtv offered me an audition for a tv show they said not only do you got to be vaxxed, but they're going to do a social credit, a social check, right? So the social credit score is slowly but surely being implemented. They're doing, that basically means MTV is going to go through your stuff. And if you're not uh, up to par with the proper ways to speak and post and all that stuff, they're not going to have you on. So it doesn't matter. There's no way they would have me on the show. There's no way. So Daily Wire is doing it. Um, before I move on, some quick things. A reminder, I will be in Tampa, Florida, Florida, and 
St. Petersburg, Great St. Pete. They call it Great St. Pete because Pete was so good and great and a saint, a good, great saint. So I'll be Tampa this Saturday, February 26th, 7 7 and 9.30 p.m. at the uh, Veterans of Foreign Wars. It's like a cool little community house thing. We're going to turn it into a a little theater. It's going to be great. And then 7 p.m. in St. Pete at uh, If I Brewed the World Brewery, outdoor stage, a lot of fun, tylerfisher.com, or the link is in the uh, description there. And I'm getting off a clamped here, but I, if anybody was, was coming to my show in Orlando, I was doing a 15-minute set at a music festival in Orlando on Friday the 25th. I have to cancel that show. So, if you're listening and you are going to come to that show, please get a refund immediately or go to it anyways because there's a bunch of comedians and stuff. Um, I'm sure it'll be fun. But they told me a few days ago, uh, we're updating our requirements. You need to get tested. Either they were updating it or they just never told us. You need a test. It's got to be, can't be the take-home test. got to be the ding, this test. You know, up the fucking, up your butthole test, whatever it is, it was very specific. And regardless of what type of test, test one, test two, testes, testicles, I already announced on here and Instagram that I will not be performing anywhere that requires proof of vaccine, testing, or or, or masks required. Now, if you want to do all that stuff, that's fine. I mean, I don't know why you'd show your vaccine card if you didn't need to, but whatever, that makes you feel better. Uh, that's fine, too. If you want to walk in like like in Wayne's World when they have the VIP passes, oh, whoa, whoa, and they're walking around with their VIP pass. Whatever you want to do, that's fine. I have zero judgment on that. But I'm not going to take the test because my options are not taking it or counter or faking it, which I'm not going to do. I have done. I think I did it once. You know, you got to do the things and feel bad about it and then not do do the things. Got to do the things and feel bad and not do the things. That's a bad Cosby impression, but uh, hey, you know what? I can do bad Cosby impressions because I ain't raping people. So I get a little bit of of a little privilege there, a little no rape privilege. So that show's canceled, and I would give you, if if you want to drive from Orlando to Tampa or St. Pete on the 26th or 27th, um, gosh, how do we do this? I guess, uh, eh, I'm going to give you free tickets, I'm just trying to figure out how I would do that. I guess send me a DM on Instagram, and I'll, ch- I'll, I'll check them in the next couple days, or just show up. How about that? Even better. Show up. And say, I got tickets to Orlando or, um, yes. Okay, I also have a manager now, which I need, so you can tell that I'm just generally confused. I have a professional who's going to help me sort all this stuff out and plan it out and all that stuff. But come to the show. Just show up, all right? This is Lucy Goosey. You, you got T-Bone here. We're not doing things by the books. Show up, say I bought tickets to Orlando, and I'll and they'll just let you in for free. I'll have that down at, with the door guy. There, huh? Pretty, pretty, pretty good, pretty good. <clears throat> That's how we do business here on the uh, the trust model. So I can't wait to go to Florida. Um, I can't wait for trailer on the ter- ter- trailer on the Terry. <laughs> <laughs> trailer on the prairie. Oh God! Hey man, I'm a stupid be trailer on the prairie. Dude. There's a bunch of people on, on a fucking trailer making fucking counterfeit Pfizer vaccines. I wonder if that market's gonna hit the counterfeit vaccine market. Well, they're free. I guess that's the problem. I bet there's a counterfeit. There's pop up testing places just littered about Brooklyn. There are these little well they're they are porta potties. They're actual porta potties that have been turned into covid testing sites. So the tester stands in the 
porta potty, the testee stands outside, and there's a little hole, and they like swab you through the hole. You can't make this stuff up. I mean, come on, you can't make it up. People have lost their fucking minds. Joe Rogan saying the N word. Enough already. Quick disclaimer, if anyone is under 30 years old, that was an impression of comedian Jerry Seinfeld from such shows as Seinfeld and comedians getting cars, getting coffee. Now back to the program. So my friend has got a joke. He goes, uh, <laughs> he goes, this, all these COVID porta potties everywhere. He goes, I went into pee, came back, came out with COVID. Ed Farrell. Uh, give him a little cred there. Um, so that movie's coming out. We're gonna, and then all the stuff I for, I forgot about is we're gonna go tour around the country. So maybe I'll get to meet some of you guys because none of this has been announced and I don't know about it. But but hopefully we get to go and premiere the movie at some movie theaters around the country. So. That's the plan. I don't believe anyone, anything anymore, so I'll wait until they book the flights, and then I can tell you where we'll be. Um, what else do I want to say about the movie? Yes, just that there's hope. People responded very well to Shut In. They're going crazy about the trailer. It's going to be great. Um, to do a movie like this for $2 million bucks is ridiculous. It's so it's it's like that's basically zero dollars in in major Hollywood film um, terms, and uh, first to know, I also just booked a role in another movie, and I don't think I could say anything about it. But also, I don't give a shit about anything anymore. So thank you, left very heavily left-leaning people you've created a monster i'm a monster uh so what i will say about it is i got an offer for another movie and um again all from social media so big up to you big up to you guys and this is dedicated to you guys i'll do my oscar speech here i don't know if you can see this right there i got the YouTube award for passing 100,000 subscribers. And I just want to say, couldn't do this without you guys. And I couldn't have done it without the comedy clubs telling me to fuck off because I couldn't get a rush vaccine when I had the antibodies, which meant I was more immune than anybody else and was supported by the science, but they didn't give a shit. And so they didn't let me perform anymore. And so I want to thank them. And then I locked myself in this, in this, um, in this living room for two years. And I didn't have anyone touch my penis. And I didn't touch anybody's boobs. And I didn't date anybody. I just made videos. And then this and then this award came in. So I want to thank this room and the titties I didn't touch. And Freddy. <laughs> he just looked at me. How cute. No, this this really does mean a lot. You know, I'm not a big award guy, uh, mainly because I've never got awards. So it's hard to be an award guy with no awards. But... What's kind of funny about this is I ha my dad's friend saw me in a play, and he was like, dude, you're going to be a movie star. And I go, shut up, dude. He goes, you are. Take off your pants. I'm a producer. Um, and he gave me a fake Oscar for my birthday. And I always kept it, right? It's on my mantle right now. And then it's funny. I put this on the mantle, and it was right next to, next to the Oscar, and I go, Oh, this is cool because I'm I might not ever get to the Hollywood award shows, which is fine, but there's a new alternative and this is it, you know? Maybe we'll call the Oscar the the million subscriber. So, hold me to that. We'll do a f full out party. Oh. Yeah, let's do that. You're all invited. We're going to do when I hit a million subscribers, we're going to throw a fucking party. Maybe we'll just do coffee. Nah, we'll do booze if you guys want. Whatever you want. Whatever you want. Because you know what? We just already hit 140,000 subscribers. So we're on a mighty way. And that means the more people on board, the more probable 
uh, it is that I can just make a movie on my own. That's the fucking beauty of this is that, sorry, I'm in a bit of a Bill Burr thing. I just did a fucking, uh, I just did a video. I saw Bill and uh, I had uh, Sebastian Maniscalco, a buddy of mine, Nick. So funny. Yeah, Nicky Schmigsh, Nicky Schmiggy. He does a great Sebastian Maniscalco. I do one, you know, I do a pretty good one as well. His is a little more, he's got the nuances. I go, what? How did you come up with that? And he's from Chicago. He looks more like him. And so he, I would say he's he's as good as, uh, with Sebastian as I am with Bill. So we just kept, we just did a Zoom thing and, um, like a podcast video that I'll put out next week. And we kept stopping going, dude, you're freaking me out. You're freaking me out because you sound so much like him. Um, so that'll be great. And the more we've got, the more probable it is that that I could even... Heck, that's the real, that's the goal. We're just going to put that out there right now. I kept trying to figure out what my long-term goal is. It's just to make movies. So right now, the movie I just took... Um, I'll be going to Ohio next week. Ultra low budget movie. There's in SAG, there's SAG rates, there's low budget. This is ultra low budget. I am not doing this for money. There's almost no money involved. I'm doing it. I mean, I got a free flight in a hotel and stuff. So as long as I'm covered for that, that week, but I have to now be a student again and learn how to be on set, learn how to break down a script, learn how to memorize dialogue and terror on the prairie. A lot of my acting in that is is physical. Physical, fighting, guns, horses. You know, I've got lines here and there, and then they let me improvise an entire scene. This is a very dialogue-heavy thing, so um, I do God, I don't I don't know if I want to say I don't want to do the movie. I I don't want to do all the work for it. So I'm forcing myself to do it. And so it's going to be fun and it's going to be challenging. And there may be guns involved again. <laughs> I don't know how the first two movies I've <coughs> I do have guns involved, but I was able to be like you got to let me know what the safety protocols are. And um, they uh, they got back to me and they said, not, not to worry, um, Alec Baldwin will be um, loading the guns. Not handling them, just loading. So I felt, I thought, okay, that sounds good. That sounds good to me. All right. Um, back on track to the manager I mentioned. All right, y'all, I'd like to thank today's sponsor for the Tyler Fish Show, Chalk. That's C-H-O-Q dot com. Chalk has created a line of powerful, pure supplements. And as promised, I would start reviewing my progress because I put my money where my chalk is. And I said... If, uh, if y'all are going to sponsor me, <clears throat> first, I'm only sponsoring companies that I believe in, like their morals, their ethics, non-woke, good people, great people, strong, strong people. That's it. Only strong people get to work with the great Tyler Fisher. And so they sent me a bunch of different uh, supplements. Um, this is their daily Right here, this is their daily um, natural choice for men. And the Ash, oh, watch, oh, I'm going to get canceled for cultur culturally appropriating a herb. Ashwagandha. And so I'm about, I think I'm 10 days in. And the reason I started taking them is like, okay, this stuff naturally boosts testosterone. Um, gives you gives you energy naturally, and I'm I'm afraid of chemicals, which is why I didn't put a certain something in my body. And so, I read the reviews. They have they have over two thousand third party verified five star reviews, and 
basically that means like they have no control over that. It's one of the most uh, like pure and honest ways to actually read reviews. Maybe I could find a way to link their reviews uh, in my description, but they have no control over what the reviews are. And I went down and I read them. So my 10 day progress is I have a more sustained energy throughout the day, which is something I was lacking. I was peaking. I'm still drinking coffee. I'm still doing all the things I do. I don't really drink or I don't smoke. I don't do drugs. I'll have maybe a quarter glass of wine every couple weeks. So I don't have a lot of variables that would like throw it off. I'm not out fucking binging on meth and shit. I'm pretty purist. And so 10 days in, I feel a natural lift in my energy, a more sustained balance energy throughout the day, and I still have like one or two cups of coffee, but I'm not having those extreme crashes like I was. And then the benefit from that is by the end of the day, I'm actually tired because I had a full energized day and I got my chalk boost, all right? You want your boosters? These are the boosters you need to get into my house. And because of that, I'm now waking up earlier. I'm getting a full day. I'm energized. But, you know, giving my body a little gift. And you can, too. You can go to chalk.com, C-H-O-Q.com. And these mofos, these awesome folks, are going to give all my listeners and viewers 35% off store-wide. And they have, I can't reach it because they're over there, they have cacao beans that are unbelievable i'm a chocolate nut so i pop a couple of those in my mouth in the morning put them in my smoothie they have all sorts of stuff for men and for women so for a limited time you get 35 percent off use code tyler 35 that's tyler 35 and wouldn't you believe it i turned 35 in just a couple days so it's just absolutely perfect kismet is that what it's called kismet it's kismet it's meant to be is what i'm saying So get your chalk on today, baby. I've been, uh, it's all good stuff. It's become overwhelming. And I want to share all this for many reasons. One, because it's what's happening in my life and that's what the podcast is, is me sharing what's happening. Two, uh, to offer some encouragement for people who are in my boat. I get a lot of messages of people who, for whatever reason, there's a a plethora. Hey, I didn't get vax, so now I can't work. Or, hey, uh, I, you know, I'm politically moderate, uh, so I can't get work, or I'm afraid to do this or that or speak out. So there is uh, lanes opening up for people who are not in the far left cult, and that is good stuff. Uh, So, I'm like a little shy about it because I have this, um, what am I fighting here? I'm fighting a little bit of, what is it called? The, um, the complex where you're, uh, oh, imposter syndrome. Very, very minimal. I, I'm not even sure I have that anymore. That's where you feel like, oh, I don't deserve, you know, what I'm getting, but it's a lot, and that's okay. It's good, maybe. That's the key point, and I want to be open about this because I fucking, I hate what people do with uh, people in the public sphere and create and treat them like they're not just regular old humans, and this ties into a lot of the work I've done in therapy and with studying psychology and trying to figure out my personality and what's right for me and what's best for me and what keeps me the most sane. And so, and I heard uh, Jordan Peterson the other day say, oh, you think you can't be too creative? Like you think there's no such thing as being too creative? Think again. You think there's no such thing as like having too many opportunities and options no think again it's just not the case because you you and it's different for everyone's personality but I've reached a point where there's too much coming in and I say that humbly I it's I'm saying it could now start to um, negatively impact my workflow and my focus and all that stuff so I got a I got a manager who's a friend of mine I don't trust anybody in the entertainment industry, and I mean nobody. So I reached out to a friend, 
and he's in the business, and he's a guy I've known for forever. And so, hot, just another little tip here: if you're in whatever industry, doesn't matter. You've got a cupcake shop. You're an actor, you're a comedian. You're you're an architect, whatever it is. Or you don't need to go the classic route of getting an agent or manager that works for a giant entertainment company or publishing house or whatever. You can work with somebody that you know and trust. It could be a family member, a friend. You know, you want them to have some experience in the business. But at the same time, would you rather have someone you know and trust who's 100% transparent, 100% on your side, keeps you grounded, helps you out, fights for you, fights for your art, your, your morals, or somebody who's in this big fancy building in a suit um, who isn't going to do any of those things. It's almost better to have the former and, and work with them to train them and help them learn the way than the latter, I think. So this guy, um, he's incredible. He's in the business. And then I sat down. I go, this is all the stuff that's happening. I can't handle it anymore. I need help with it. Do you want to be on my team? I'm giving him 10%, which is a standard rate for an agent or manager. No matter what he gets me, helps me get, or if I bring him in on it, he gets 10%. If it's 1000 he gets $100. If it's $10,000, he gets $1,000, and so on and so forth. So very excited because I couldn't keep up with the podcast or anything I was doing, and now I've got a partner in crime who will keep me. This guy is so structured. He's got a wife. He's got a kid. He's got a mortgage. <coughs> he's got a pants. He can afford underwear. So we're going to start to work together. And uh, and I'll keep you guys posted on all that. I'll give you tips. And uh, there is a way to do this that can be very fun and very healthy. And I told him, I said, hey, man, just you got to know this. It, this is going to be fun. We're, we are going to have fun with this. This is not going to be stressful. We're going to ask for what we want. If we don't get it, we're not going to do it. You know, of course, there'll be some negotiating. And so I'm very excited. This is uh, this is a self-care and self-loving thing that I did, which was say I can no longer handle the flow of what's coming in. I can't handle it. I need help. Please help me. And it was humbling as hell because I had to pitch him. It forced me to uh, figure out what I actually need. It's really helpful to write that stuff out. What do I need? What do I need help with? What do I want? What are my goals? So... Um, and what, another cool thing, and the, the ultimate goal is to, you know, have a committed sort of, you know, we're, we're, we're going to test it out, but the goal is to make a TV series, maybe many movies, and he will be right there with me and hopefully reaping the rewards and the fun and every the adventure that comes along with that. So, um What's also neat is it's uh, I can kind of now, it's just sort of hitting me, create my team. And who do I want involved in that team? And this gentleman, this gentleman caller, has been someone who's been so supportive and... Um, really a, a positive light and a positive spirit in my life. And so I thought, well, this this would be a cool person to, to bring in and to um, also help where I can. And there's this notion, you know, this is sort of a, this notion that everyone um, reaches a certain point and becomes corrupt and um, is only after power and such. And it's, it's just not true, I think, for the majority of people. For a select few, they'll get to a certain point, they'll exploit power, they'll exploit people, and all of that stuff. But what I find is, and with a lot of people that become, start to find success, like this is incredibly rewarding for me to potentially, not like I'm paying this guy back, but to potentially give him something. Like I get a lot of joy out of that. And that's a reassuring human quality that a lot of humans still have. Guy I went to uh, high school with. 
sent me a message. Hey, I want to become a comedian. I'm in LA. And I didn't, you know, can you help me or give me tips? And I wasn't like, oh, I don't have time for this guy. I'm too busy. I was so excited to go, man, I, this kid was so funny in school. He's pursuing this now. I can offer him something and not get anything back from it, aside from the joy of encouraging somebody to go for their career. And then yeah, the rest is in their hands. And, um, yeah, well, you know who I learned that from? I learned that from Jordan Peterson. I learned that from Jordan Peterson. And big news on the sketch that I did with my pal where we both played Jordan Peterson, two bros turning into Jordan Peterson. We post the video, and it's like you're not going to believe it, man. I'm, whoa. I mean, it's like this is what happens when you take responsibility with your life because, man, like you can't, it's like comical. You can't even believe this happened, but... The man himself, Jordan B. Peterson, it's like he bloody retweeted the video on his massive Twitter following, you know? I mean, good for him, man. It's like good for him. And he wrote very funny boys and gave us some encouragement and shared it. And that's what he did. He used his his outreach, not for power, but to help some little guys like me. Man, it's like that guy's got a head on his shoulders, you know? I mean, really does, you know? guy like Jordan Peterson, he figured it out. He he turned chaos into order. I mean, he he rescued his uncle from the belly of a dolphin. You know, he'll he'll pet a porcupine on the sidewalk. He's not afraid to, you know, to talk to a rattlesnake if he sees one. So good for him. It's like good. It's like good on you. Thanks for sharing. So, well, that's all I'll say about that. Also, Kathy Newman's a big bitch. I'll say that. <laughs> mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. She is. That was so cool. <clears throat> Sobbed. Sobbed like a little fucking gender neutral. I don't know where I'm going with this. Coffee's wearing out. I don't mean to offend anybody who's gender neutral. Sincerely. But it was great, man, because watching his videos really did encourage me to uh, stop playing a victim, get my life together, take on responsibility, get a dog. You know? And uh, so I let him know that. I wrote him back on Twitter, and and it's, it's, very, it's very cool. You know, I, I, I called my buddy, um, and we're like, dude, this is what we're doing this for, man. These are the fun moments, so let's celebrate it. But uh, yeah, we we just were like, yeah, let's celebrate the moment, and and that's a fun little win. I took the rest of the day off and and just had some fun and and soaked it in. Then I got back to work. But what I mentioned in that was, and this was hilarious because he uh, Ami texted me. He goes, dude, uh, this guy's got a huge following. His name is his name is Hassan Piker. I'm not here to shit on this guy. I don't know anything about him at all. Uh, I think he's, you know, he's on the far left, which is whatever. I don't even know where I am. I'm politically fluid, okay? I got three dicks and five political affiliations. But he uh, he does this live stream thing, like a seven-hour live stream or six-hour thing. And he f- discovers our Jordan Peterson impression and then watches it in the live stream, and he gives us a rave review. I, again, I don't want to shit on him. He really was talking us up. He's like, man, this is so good. This is hilarious. And um, then he goes on my Twitter to try to dig a little bit and figure out who we are, and he sees a tweet that I wrote that said, shout out to the, <laughs> shout out to the man who <laughs> taught me to stand up to tyranny, Jordan B. Peterson. And he goes, oh, fuck. No. No, they're Jordan fans. Oh, these fucking assholes. And he starts reaming us. And he's like, no. And he's scrolling down my thing and seeing me, like, attacking whatever Biden or some AOC or something. And it's like, no, they're they're fucking righties. Like, they kept calling us cucks or cunt. Like, some chumps or some word that they use to insult people who are on the right, which, again, I'm not, whatever, who gives a fuck, I'm, I don't know anything about politics, but uh, 
Then he sees my uh, anti-mandate stand-up clip, and he's like, no, he's fucking talking at these speed. Like, they really think, people on the far left think I'm an evil, like, Nazi. It's crazy. And he goes, oh, he's not funny now. He goes, as soon as he, he watched the first eight seconds of my speech, which was really just stand-up, he goes, oh, God, he's so unfunny. The second he stops doing impressions, he's not funny. Had he watched any longer, the whole two-minute set was impressions. It was Fauci and Biden and Trump, um, Abraham Lincoln. And it was just fun to watch that unfold in real time because this guy had a just a serious hatred for me because I was at that rally. And it's so mind-blowing. It's so mind-blowing. I mean, this guy is so far left, he would be obviously incredibly supportive of let's say my body my choice and all of those things and perhaps being anti you know big establishment or pharmaceuticals or whatever and here he is shitting on me but i will give him credit where credit's due like he did he left off on a high note and said okay eh, they're a bunch of cucks or whatever the that word is cunts cucky cunts it was but you know what these guys are fucking talented and I thought, well, that was cool. That was cool. He's incredibly politically divisive and hates me for not wanting to get stuff put in my body or whatever. And uh, But he goes, man, these guys are talented. These guys are good. Then his fans start fighting him, going, "You now you're defending these fucking assholes? And then, now he's fighting with his fans defending me and Ami. It was so funny and so cool. But where all this is leading is 100,000 of his fans went over to my YouTube page and watched that Jordan Peterson video. <clears throat> so I went from 88,000 views to 180,000 views overnight. Boom. Another couple hours goes by. Then Jordan retweets it. Boom. And now it's fucking skyrocketing. Skyrockets at night. Woo. Afternoon delight. So we're afternoon delighting over here, and, uh, and so that was awesome. And that's America, baby. That's America. That's America. That's America. <laughs> ah, shit. Uh, now I'm mixing Biden and George W. Bush, and I got a mixture going on here. That uh, corn pop used to mix a pool with little black boys. He'd mix up the water with the chains and make the waves. Uh, uh, and the chicken fret... Fr- Chicken Crick. Ah, you know what I'm talking about, you son of a bitch. Did you see Biden call the reporter a son of a bitch? So funny. So funny. So funny. But that's America, damn it. You got me saying what I want on a video, making money off of it, getting YouTube ads, and, and I had a sponsor, and you guys are supporting and commenting, and it's all feeling quite free for the moment on my YouTube page. Then this leftist who might... Be a proclaimed Marxist. I fact check me if you must. And but good for him. He's making his money, spouting his stuff, and got a huge following, got a million subscribers, and he's probably making a million bucks a year. Then you got Jordan Peterson, who's, you know, unbelievably against everything this guy stands for and supports my freedom of speech. He's retweeting it and people are commenting and and uh, hey, that's pretty fucking cool. We can do that and not be like at war with each other. You can't underestimate how unbelievable that is and how you really can't do that in many other countries. So hopefully, can't believe I'm defending YouTube. Hopefully my page remains as such, you know. Um, you know, I think that's good. I think we'll we'll leave it there. You know, I think, uh, well, that's all I'll say about that. So clean your rooms. Stand up straight with your shoulders back. Don't talk to that bitch, Kathy Newman. You know, make your bed. Wipe your butt front to back. You know, clean your nipples. It's like, yeah, you better clean your nips. Clip your toenails. Shave a cat if you see it on the street. Just give it a shave, you know. It's like, do that for... to fight tyranny. And so, do something nice for yourselves this week. I hope to see you in Florida. I really do. You know, I really do. Hope to see you there. 
you better come with a suit on. And subscribe and hit the notification bell or we will digress into a murderous tyranny and millions will die. So please do that.